Greetings and salutations one and all and welcome to episode 6. I can't believe it's episode 6 already but it is episode 6 of Fabian Sex. So happy to be here in these COVID-19 times. Hope you're taking care of yourself, doing your social distancing. Big up, big up to all the healthcare workers and first responders. You know, we're going to get through this. This is a, this is a new thing. It's a thing that we're adjusting to. Um, I keep saying there's a lot of lessons and opportunities. I'm glad I'm remaining open to. So this episode is called, Is There a Thin Line Between Coaching, Teaching and Being a Bully? <laughs> Strange, right? So here's how it came to me. A gentleman who I'm going to call my neighbor, right? I keep having, well, I'm having this disturbing response to him, coaching what seems to be his son. And then there's an additional, I guess, personal side note to this for me is that when a colleague of mine greeted him when he was at my gate when we were talking and it turns out that he's a fitness instructor of some kind i thought okay cool this is really interesting you know somebody who lives near on, on, on my road and you know we can go check and see what kind of fitness team i'm doing because i'm planning to take on this lifestyle adjustment of losing weight and being fitter so maybe this is why initially i was so disturbed by this so i overhear him coaching a, a boy who i assume assuming his son and he always just seems so Badgering, so badgering and bullying and just oppressive, you know. And a few times the, the, the boy has ended up crying, has ended up in tears. And I hear him saying, Stop the crying, and I, I'm the coach, and you must listen to me. And why are you doing that? Do it again. No, do it again. Do it again. And I'm like, Okay, that's a little harsh, dad or coach or dad coach. Second time, I had the same reaction. Third time, same reaction. Today was like the fourth or fifth time, the fifth time I'm hearing it and I had the same response and I'm thinking does it have to be so oppressive and heavy? You know, where is the space for lightness? And don't get me wrong, you know, there are times when, you know, like he explained, you know why I'm doing this, you know I'm making you do it over and over again. But even then the tone is very terse and very oppressive and very bullying. And then it made me pull back and think about myself, you know, as an artistic director, as a director. You know, as a teacher, as a tutor, you know, there have been times, and even when, when I, you know, had people that I've managed, there are times when I read the right act. You know, I'm a deep up on that people. <laughs> sometimes I've, you know, dealt with people harsh and sometimes they, they cry or get upset. But I always make it clear that, you know, A, that's not my norm, that's not my first suit. That's not, that's not who I am generally. But I'm very direct, very passionate. But when people, they get deep up and verbally drip up, they verbally drip them up. I don't believe in telling people a bad word. I don't believe in shouting at people and in times when I've done that I attempt to apologize or when I do people say boy Mr. T really really mad and so I thought well maybe there is space for that but should it be the overriding overarching thing you know, am, I, am, I, am I dealing with this man too harshly in my opinion of him from across the street so I said let me go look up what is coaching so being a coach is being an instructor or trainer you know, especially in the, in the realm of sports. It's also is being a private tutor in terms of education. You know, and then I think about, you know, artistic directors and, and directors and choreographers in, in the arts and in theater, who there's a notorious thing and sometimes an acceptance of that these people of talent and pros and skill who lead companies can, can do and say what they want. You know, treat people any way they want, shout at people, tell people bad word, you know, treat them unfairly, usurp their rights. That's never been something I believe in and endorse. I don't believe in it, but for a lot of people, they say, well, it comes with the territory, because the way to get the results you want, the way for people to do well and, and succeed and be at the top of their game is roughness and harshness. You know, and people, people tell her that, I don't know, I, I don't believe that. What do you think? I mean, do you think, and people, please post your comments, do you think that roughing up and bullying, basically, is, is part of the process of, of, of achieving greatness. I find that we glorify and overvalue suffering and we actually try to make people feel bad if they don't have no suffering in their life, if they don't have an awful story to tell that's gonna break your heart. You know, it's a lot of these talent shows, you know, the people's backstories are so disturbing and so, oh, my life is so hard. And part of it is made up, you know, and it's, 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 it's an artificial thing, but a lot of it is real. 
But my, my question becomes, what's the value of telling that story of the hardship? So is it that only when you achieve things, when you come through hardship, is that the only time it's valid? Do we only value people who have had tragedy and trauma in their lives? So people who have been lucky enough or have been able to maneuver their way out of those things, are their achievements not as glorious and interesting? You know, have we become hungry for the, 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 the sad story, the hard luck story, the stressful story? And don't get me wrong, I'm not discounting people's hardships, but I think we push it a lot and it becomes a thing. So bully, what is it, the definition of a bully? So a bully is somebody who harms and intimidates people habitually. So you can't be a bully one time. You know, you could have, be having a bad day or an off day. But a ha bullying is habitual, so it's over a period of time and it's repeated. And then it's also, you know, cursing people, harming them, intimidating them. Is that a part of this coaching process, you know, of, of, of training people, of directing and guiding people? Is that acceptable or, you know, or should we be trying to minimize that? I think the latter. I go for love and grace and respect and gentleness. I don't believe that we should reach for the big broad stick and beat people over the back and bully them and cuss bad word after them and all that stuff. That that should be the norm. And if it is, then is that functional or dysfunctional? Is it okay to say, you abused me, you berated me, you threw things at me, you tell me bad word, you tell me about my mother, but at least I got a gold medal. <laughs> You know, or at least I'm successful now. The do the ends really justify the means. Um, I'd love some of my colleagues, I and mean, you women don't know if you chime in upon this. So, Karen Madden, talk to me. I'm, I'm going to tag you in this. Dalton Myers, uh, let me know what you feel. Raul, Raul Reed, who's a coach. I'm a football coach. Uh, let, 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 chime in, let me know what you think. Asafa, Safa, what do you say? Pocket Rocket, what do you think about this? You saying, you know, what, what, what do you guys feel about this? Bruce James, or if there are any coaches, do you think that the ends justify the means? You know, do you think that it, it, it is tough love, must be tough love? And at the end of it, what, what do we have left? You know, what was the, what's the taste left in somebody's mouth? Is it, is it okay if there's a bitter, painful taste, if there are bruises, probably literally and figuratively, all over the person's psyche and maybe even their body? after the journey of them doing well and winning the medals and getting the accolades and winning Grammys and Academy Awards and Actor Boy Awards and Jammy Awards. It, do the ends justify the means or are some of us who are in these positions of authority as choreographers, directors, artist directors, you know, um, football, athletic coaches, are we bullies? You know, is a big part of what we're doing bullying people and, and, and treating people badly to a, a justifiable end. You know, a pet peeve of mine is the whole schoolboy, schoolgirl, athletics and sports thing in Jamaica. I think it's horrendous. I think we're doing these young people a disservice. I think we're using them up, eating them up and using them while they're in school and then spitting them out when they're done. You know, a lot of them with we, we, not enough subjects or when they get injured and they're no longer useful to us, then we discard them. And that, that always sits in my craw very, very heavily. And I have a challenge with that, you know, I think it is absolutely disgraceful and I hope maybe it's changed that the 45% is the pass mark that Issa has set for kids to run for their school. What is that? That's a disgrace, you know, because you're also, I think, telling the athletes you're stupid, that you're, you, you, you can do as well. That you don't have to push to do, I mean, most schools, the pass mark for the school is 60%. How are you telling people at 45? Is it anyway? I'm going off on a tangent. Ooh, sir. That's another Fabian say. So what do you think? What do you think? You know, am I am I dealing with this my neighbor, this this man who's coaching his son or this boy unfairly? Is roughing up and consistent roughing up and badgering people part of the game? Do the ends justify the means? You know, is there what is this thin line or is there a thin line between being a coach, a director, a teacher, and a bully? We're gonna say, let me know. This has been Fabian Say, part six, uh, episode six. Um, blessings, love, and light. Take care of yourself. Peace out.